Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd here at Bay Area Maker Fair, thanks to Matter Hackers, and I'm here with... Owen Schoeniger of Maker Gear. Owen, tell me a little bit about Maker Gear. I haven't used a Maker Gear printer yet, but I've heard a lot of people who really love their printers. Why is that? Um, well, there are several reasons. Every, you know, every user is different, but if I had to boil it down to one or two points, I would say performance and reliability. So when you when you take a closer look at the machine, um, one of the things, one of the first things you might realize is that the most desktop thing about it is really its size. Um, you know, we use a lot of precision machine components. We have a lot of uh, more professional, industrially oriented users, and so we cater to those needs with what we like to call rock solid machines. So um, I can go into plenty of detail about specific features, but as far as giving you the introduction, it's sort of bringing uh, professional or industrial performance to the desktop realm. One of the things I really like about what I've seen is the machine is built with a, a solid metal piece, yeah. and it's got rails for the axes. So yeah. it's it's machined well. It's rock solid, like you said. Um, what what are some of the things that you've incorporated into the new M3 that's just out? Okay, so the M3, if you know. If you had to compare M2 to M3, the biggest difference you would notice is in a streamlined user experience. Now, having said that, there are a number of uh, hardware and performance improvements that we've rolled out. Um, so for cooling-friendly materials like PLA and PETG, um, you can get much greater unsupported overhangs and get great print quality thanks to our new cooling system. Um, you know, let's see, we've optimized the top plate, so there's an added level of rigidity to that already rigid frame, um, so you can go much faster and still get that great print quality because there's not any kind of loose vibrations going on. So we've tightened that up a little bit, um, and then we've introduced a totally new uh, user interface that we call Octoprint for Maker Gear. So it's not totally new in the sense that uh, we've created Octoprint, but we've built on top of the great things that the open source community has done within the Octoprint project and uh, cater that towards the needs of our users. So um, not only have we improved upon the performance of the machine for existing users, but for this wider audience of people who um, who are new to 3D printing, now they can access that the functionality that Maker Gear printers are known for. So um, we've always been kind of known as the printer that if you're comfortable, if you know what G-code is, if you aren't afraid to, to uh, work with your machine, the Maker Gear M2 is perfect. That's always been the story. It says it in our 3D Hubs review. You know, it's praise for hackability. But hackability isn't always great for the new user. So we wanted to, uh, to you know, with the M3, like I said, there's a lot of performance improvements. But where we really wanted to focus with this was making a streamlined user experience um, so that, you know, a wider audience can can have access to this, you know, the empowerment that is so well associated with 3D printing. As far as the M3 goes, and, and even the M2, um, I'm, I, I know the 3D printing community, and it's not, it's not as well represented across the board. It doesn't seem like many in the community have themselves a maker gear, gear machine. I know, I know some people that do, yeah. and they absolutely love the machine. So what is Maker Gear doing to get more machines into the hands of more people? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so, as a as a short answer to your question, we are a small team. Since 2009, when we were founded, we have been entirely bootstrapped. So, um, no no venture capital. No venture. No, no. So, um, you know, we've we've definitely taken a slower, more organic route to growth than some of our competitors. And you know, there are costs and benefits to both strategies, both ways of growing. But in terms of you know, sometimes when you have limited resources. Um, in our case, you know, we've chosen to focus on the product rather than storytelling and marketing and getting our machine out there for reviews because really our founder has sort of um, integrated this culture into uh, Maker Gear where we can't release something unless it's rock solid. So we're not really known as the first to market with anything. We're known as, you know, we go with what works and what works well. And so um, just to give you a little factoid that relates to that, um, our founder likes to mention that we literally didn't do any sales or marketing until the year 2016 when I joined on January 4th. So January 4th, 2016, it's when the marketing department was formed. Actually, not true. That's when I came to Maker Gear and began, you know, diving in head first with 3D printing. My first day, they gave me a box, they gave me the Wi-Fi password, and they said, here is the, the crucible. Here's the Wi-Fi password, figure it out, you're not allowed to ask any questions. Um, 
And then that served as a great experience for me to, uh, to begin helping them uh, better communicate uh, how to use their products and sort of vamping up that user experience um, so it's, like I said, easier. So it's been a constant path for me since I joined Maker Gear to demystify the technology that is you know, a Maker Gear 3D printer and make it more accessible. Uh, my background is in education, so I'm really more about sharing with the community than I am um, about uh, technology specifics. But you know, lately I've gotten to learn quite a bit, fortunately. This is um, amazing. I, it's good to hear. What, what, what I'm really impressed with, though, is that they gave you a box and said, just figure it out. Yeah. Don't ask any questions. Yeah. And that speaks that to... I'm not allowed to ask questions. So there was a two-week period where I had to write down all my questions, and I could ask them after I had tried everything. But it was the idea was to simulate what is the experience as of right now for a new user who knows nothing. And I was kind of the baseline. Yeah. That's great, Owen. The guinea pig, I, I guess you could say. Oh, not kind of at all. You were the guinea pig, Owen. I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, well, what can people do if they want to find out more about Maker Gear? Where can they go to find out more about the machines? I would definitely recommend checking out our website. Check us out on social media. Um, you know, like I said, we just announced the M3 single extrusion and independent dual a couple of weeks ago. The M3 single will ship in June, and the, the independent dual ships in July. So, if you want to learn more, you can go to our website. Um, you know, you can even contact me directly, Owen at MakerGear.com. I'll address all of your specific questions, whoever you are. You know, like I said, I'm happy to to connect directly with the community. This is this is why I do what I do. So, you know, check out our website social media or reach me directly via email. You got it. Owen, thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. it. Let's, yeah, uh, this is great. One of the things I do, I steal it with a high five. You ready? Yeah.